Um, so what we're doing today is, now again, Schrodinger equation minus h bar squared over 2 times mass. Remember that mass is a little funky for the hydrogen atom because we have to actually, that's actually like a center of mass. Don't worry about that. It's just this weird little fact. Maybe some of you will go into um, grad school in chemistry. You, you might run into that. I, I, sometimes, I, again, I see a mass of an electron that's not quite right. It's a little too high when I realize it's a reduced mass. No, not a big deal. Okay, <clears throat> kinetic energy, you know this in three dimensions. Um, spherical coordinates, this is our angle part. Uh, there's Coulomb's law because you have a proton and an electron. Energy is energy. And now what we're going to do is, so this is the whole thing. I'm not writing out the angle part because I did it last time, number two. It's ten, that, that part's 10 miles long, too. Um, uh, so we're going to whittle it down from here. Then, as I promised, I, I've seen how, once you get to this point, how you solve the bloody differential equation to get to the solutions. It's unpleasant to say the least and we're not going to do it. I'm going to show the wave functions and then we're going to deconstruct all of this. Um, th there's like limiting um, forms of like okay the wave function close to the nucleus, the wave function far away from the nucleus. So if we can deconstruct this without necessarily solving it from scratch which again is just a three-day lesson in just pure applied math. I, mean, I just would rather not to be blunt. Okay so um, if you're not completely honest, and I'm just counting on that, one of the things to note that I go from here to here, one thing I would do differently, i actually slated to teach the same class again, uh, and also probably work on a textbook. One of the things I would do differently is, uh, and again, I'm hoping folks aren't getting lost, is that right now this is in, of course, this form of the eigenvalue form, which is what I started you out with. And I, I hope that, I brought it up a couple times, but I hope that it's not, you're not getting lost when I do the whole divide by the left, act on the right. Uh, now, energy is a constant, so if I have the wave function on the, life, the, le on the right and divide on the left, uh, that just turns into a constant. And then, um, although this is kind of trivial, uh, I'm expressing it, that's what I've, I've done in other places, not right here. Other times you see me, um, oh, okay, so, so anyway, so I go from here to here. Now you know that this is how I show separability. I often will express it like this because that's just, if you look in the math literature, that's how they like to do it. Now one reason that I like this as well is because you know that when we do this for separability, and, and I'm kind of speaking off the cuff here, so if the wave function has more than one operator in it, and so now I'm going to switch to a different representation. Let's say that there's this one operator plus another operator, uh, and I'm, again, I'm kind of speaking out of my rear end here, so hopefully I'm not going to screw up. Um, the reason that you might want to do this, this whole separability thing, is because this guy might just be like a number, or it's like m squared. I don't know. Uh, you actually saw, and again, you've seen this happen many times. So, familiar, uh, okay, but why? Uh, rearranging it, what's the point of that? Well, it's all to get down to this. And what's left behind is, again, a miniature Schrodinger equation that you can solve. And so you're seeing that here. You're seeing that here with the ang um, the angle bits. Uh, how did I do that? I'm completely not, oh, I didn't, anyway. I don't want you getting lost here. Sorry about that. Okay, not, not the most confusing thing in the world. There you go. Um, yeah, notice, I didn't have to do that. Why would I? I got to work on my notes. I, should, I didn't need to um, bring over that h part squared anyway. Uh, okay, so, so when, I, when I'm doing this, which hopefully is easy to follow, this is how it manifests. Just a little bit more complicated. Just now the constants are now, instead of a number, instead of h bar, <coughs> jazz. Okay, and of course I'm assuming, notice that I've also written the wave function out as purely the radial. And when you're at this point, you're basically done. This is, again, don't, it, you know, look, just a bunch of constants, a bunch of constants. I know it looks like it, but it's just a bunch of constants. When you solve this especially, uh, if we do S, we're going to make L zero, and that whole term is gone. So really you've got these guys, and then you've got the 1 over r here equal to a constant. You look in a 17th century math textbook and you're done. 
Okay, now, as I mentioned last time, um, I want to do some more simplification, and that means more uh, manipulations of operators. Uh, some more pure math. It's kind of like, remember how when we first started doing free wave, I said, well, you're going to have to learn some imaginary this and that, e to the i, k, x. Why? You don't have to do that, right? I, you can actually do everything we did without the letter i. It's just that everything turns to a sine plus cosine. You're going to regret it. It's 10 miles long, try 20 miles long if I don't include the letter i. But then you don't have to learn imaginary math. Well, which one is it, right? I'm, I'm thinking that it's better to just get com comfortable with the letter i and then not have this even worse. <laughs> so, so I'm going to do that here. I'm going to pare this down a little bit and the expense of adding a step, but then the result is easier to analyze, especially if I put it on a test, let's put it, you know, put it that way. Okay, so this thing, as you're now kind of used to it, maybe if anything this is good practice, this can be simplified, although it's kind of subjective. Uh, and the way that looks is, it looks like this. Now, um, I can't really go backwards, so what I'm showing you is I'm, I'm showing you the answer. I'm showing you the answer to the uh, operator, and then what I do is I apply, I apply a wave function, and um, of course it better have an R in it. I don't even have to tell you what it is, and it's going to turn into that. And of course what we've got is, um, and you know the whole thing with quantum, the whole thing with quantum is um, product rules, right? Product rules just, that's the part that kills you. And then you see a product rule with an angle. I don't know that. It's like, you know, the product rule's a knife, and then if it's a theta, then it like twists a little bit. Uh, I don't know why I feel that way. I just don't like, I, you know, so I see the derivative of sign, I get upset. Um, okay, um, let's see, what do I, let's see. I actually am gonna plan to show you this. Let me see, one over r. And I always, now, you know I'm gonna put this on the exam. I, I don't know exactly this, um, but I'm gonna have you do some operator manipulation. Just go slow, right? Um, one over r, one over r, uh, first derivative. I'm not going to do this in my head. That would be obscene. Um, okay, the first derivative of r, of, of r times the wave function. Um, I always do the low-hanging fruit first. Uh, and then I just remember to, to just do the opposite. So that guy's still there. And again, I want to use um, this notation, this little dash notation for the derivative. You've seen that before. Uh, okay, and now I've got, sorry my handwriting's not good today, actually when my handwriting's bad it usually gets better over time. Uh, okay, so now what? So now I've got uh, the derivative of the wave function, and then I got the same deal, I've got the derivative of the wave function, so now I've got two, uh, <laughs> two derivatives of the wave function, so there we go, one over r, so you see that's, that's a lie. Uh, then, of course, I leave that one, um, right, I leave that, wait a minute. Yeah, I leave that one alone, then I do the um, derivative of that guy, but it's already derivative, so it's a double derivative. Okay, so the point of this is that this mess here, this mess, this is how you see it in textbooks. It turns out it can be turned into this, and I just proved that. So, uh, again, I just, I took a little bit longer to do this, and maybe like, well, why don't you do that? Um, because it's a little bit easier to analyze, we're going to spend about the next half hour uh, breaking this thing down into bits. And you know, I know I don't I don't know if you're bothered or perturbed by it, but that mass deal still. There's two M's. There's M for mass, and there's an M for the rotational bit, the 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 phi bit. Okay, so and I'm distributing the H bars. Uh, in masses, um, just uh, just for the hell of it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that nice. It's actually a little bit easier, right? So it's all just right there. Uh, and, and so don't forget what I'm doing now. Now I've got just that. Bit. Now I'm doing the angle bit, right? So see how much it, it actually seemed to make this easier, kind of. I guess. Anyway, okay. There's this. Uh, notice that I've also. Un, I have undone the, shouldn't there be an R on your um, function derivative twice? 
uh, um, I have not, um, no, no, what do you mean? Uh, so, so what I've done is up one board. So when you took the, the second derivative, you could take the derivative of r times your wave function prime. Um, right there. Yeah, uh, so, so I do another derivative of this. Uh, I act on that one first, so this guy comes back. And then, and then I leave this. Yeah, then I leave that one alone. <coughs> okay. There, there you go. Yes, thank you, thank you. Right. Uh, you know what I did was I already I had divided it in my head. I divided it in my head before I did it. So part of the problem with not powerpointing, of course. And I've asked. You know, I've done this class a couple of times. I've always asked people like, would it be better to powerpoint because then there's no mistakes, or I catch them eventually, to be honest. Or or we write and we keep up with each other. And people have always asked that we write and keep up with each other, but I will make mistakes. So um, individual preference, right? Okay, so notice that I've also, um, I've also, I'm gonna leave this alone because that's, that's important. Um, <laughs> what I've done here, this next step is I then multiply. So I'm actually working from this thing. Uh, I, I'm multiplying because uh, you know, the whole separability, right? Act on the right, divide by the left. Because you, you get a sub-equation, it turns into like, it, it whittles it down. It whittles it down. And you've heard me say that a zillion times. So it's like, sorry, it's like, it's like the number, so there's the number. Uh, and now I'm returning it to the eigenvalue looking thing. So I, I fold it up and I'm, I, I fold it up with this, um, a uh, separate belly deal, simplify it and fold it back out. So that's, that, and I'm doing that right here. Um, so I, I'm taking this whole mess, constants and all, wave function, and again, putting this in more, I mean, I, I'm actually happier with this. I, I like seeing eigenvalue equations. I'm just, I'm more familiar with it. And um, although I, I kind of like the appeal of this because I like simplifying giant equations that go on for 10 miles. Okay. Okay, so this is it. This is it. Uh, I know that sometimes, especially with Maxwell Boltzmann, I often start with a 10 mile equation. And Maxwell Boltzmann simplified like way tiny, right? This one, not, not so much, but, but not, not terrible either, especially when you just consider that the constants just, you know, if you can just like erase it in your head, this, this is not bad. Okay, now, as I prime, now this is, this is as low as it gets. So now remember, let's also do another big picture. Um, Kinetic energy and radial is hideous, 10 miles long. I've got Coulomb. Uh, you whittle down the phi part. You whittle down the theta part. And I actually did that in the second step. Uh, and then all this was just some rearrangement to the R part. And notice that the energy funneled down, as it has done in so many other examples, down to the last Schrodinger equation, the last miniature Schrodinger equation. And now I can get the energy. Okay, so. Now I can get, um, I've got the angular equations, did them with the 2D rotor, fed to the 3D rotor, got the, got the theta equation, got the phi equation, got the theta equation. Now I'm going to get the radial equation. And again, because of the way this, this separability thing works, I'm also getting the energy. That's really all that you could want. Uh, except that we're going to do some more analysis. Once we get the wave functions, again, the whole point of the wave functions is it's cool to get the energy, get the spectra and all that stuff. It helps you, it says you understand everything. That's pretty useful. The other reason is, is that there are sometimes there's things, there's innards into the wave function that can be looked into. And you start seeing that there's things like negative energy and that's really weird, but it does seem to be true. Uh, anyway, okay, so first thing I want to look at this guy then we'll look at the wave functions, and then again, we're going to look at their nuances. Okay, now let me, and this is a good one. This gets everyone every year. This term, is it energy raising or lowering? Yeah. Energy raising or lowering? It's got a negative sign. It's got a negative sign, therefore it must be raising or lowering. Yes, raising. It's energy. Why is it energy raising if it's got a negative sign? Because it would be too obvious to be lower. <laughs> well, it, well, yes. That gives you half points on the test. 
Not bad, it's still an F. <laughs> better, than that, better than no points. Okay, why is it energy raising though? Sorry. Huh? This like R increases the denominator. Uh, well, well, so the answer is the double derivative will return a negative. Now, now hold on one second, hold on one second. Now, well, the reason I'm asking this is, well, here, let me write that down. Um, energy raising. Now, the reason I'm asking this um, is, is, for one, this is complex enough that, you know, before we couldn't really do that. We couldn't really look at a Hamiltonian and then get anything about the energy other than just, like, solving it, looking at those 17th century textbooks and saying, well, here it is. Uh, this is complex enough. You actually can pick this apart. It actually is a little bit, because it's so complex, you can actually look at the parts, and then, they, and then those parts are actually easier. Uh, okay, now this is energy raising in the same, I am not going to touch that. Um, let, me, let me write something here, and then I'm going to erase it again. Uh, so, so put that in your notes. Okay, so let's think back to this. Let me, let's put a sign. Um, uh, uh, um, what am I doing? X, KX. Uh, okay, okay. Now, I, I had to think about it there for a second. Uh, 2 pi over lambda. Now, what's 2 pi over lambda? Okay, so you're used to this. Now, this should bore you. This should put you to tears. At this point, you're used to this. The answer to this is actually right here. You should apply what you know here to here. Okay, so what is 2 pi over lambda? Now, now think about how did how did how did Schrodinger ever do a double derivative? Why did he ever do a derivative of a wave function? With the lambda. What what lambda is that? Isn't that wavelength? Uh, it's a wavelength that has a special name. Think to the very beginning. Why does matter have a wavelength? Well, it behaves like a wave. Uh, right, what's that called? Uh, right sharp, not what, what's that? A de Broglie. De Broglie, it's a de Broglie wavelength. Right, now, to get it out, to get it out, you had to do what? And I'm pointing at it. Think a double derivative. Uh, derivative, okay, but what does a double derivative do? Not left sharp, right sharp? The no, 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 you, back there. <laughs> you, right there. Double derivative of a sign. Negative sign? Yes, exactly, right. He had to put a minus sign, just had to put it there, really. I, I, maybe there's a little bit more, you know, substance to that, but I, I think literally, it's like, oh, I'm going to pick up a minus sign, and then, well, look at that, it gets fixed if I put a minus sign. Same thing, right? Remember, this is, this is really the kinetic energy operator. It's whittled down. But it's the same idea. This is kinetic energy. Kinetic energy can only be raising. The minus sign takes care of this silly double derivative that keeps kind of popping up, but, but inevitably introduces a, a minus sign. OK, anyway, so that's a good one, right? That's like a good test question. Every other test, that one appears, by the way. OK, now, now that you know how to play this game, notice that I distributed the constants. You saw me on a homework get I flubbed one of those questions. I'm still burned on that because of, because of the minus sign. So I distributed the constants. Same game, energy raising or lowering. No, what if you said zero? That's not, no, I'm just kidding. What is it, raise, raising or lowering? Raising. Huh? Raising. Okay, okay most people said raising. Uh, let me check my notes because actually, yeah, that's correct. That's energy raising. Okay. Now, I want to point out a couple of things. Um, if, all right, for one, L can't be zero, right? Because the term's not there, that's obvious. Okay, so if L is equal to zero, what kind of wave function am I describing? Yeah, right shark? Yeah, all of you who are asleep? Yeah, you, you. L equals zero, what is it? What kind of wave function? Yeah, yeah, you, sure. Anyone? Oh, God, just say something, Jesus. You are dead. Okay, angular momentum of zero. What kind of? Same uh, 
Yeah. No, no, no. It's a hydrogen atom. You know what the wave functions are. It's a ground state, sure, but why? What kind of, what's, hydrogen has what kind of electron? One what? S. 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 One S. It's a one S state, right? It's a one S state. It has no angular momentum. Now, as I mentioned, it's kind of, you know, quantum this, quantum that, quantum kitty cat, it can get really, sometimes the stuff can get really like perplexing, especially, I just erased it, but like, why is the double derivative of space equal energy instead of double derivative of time, as it is in Newton's mechanics, right? Double derivative of time with the acceleration, master's acceleration, the force and distance, anyway. You don't see that. You see not the derivative of time, but the derivative of space. There's some things that are ultra weird. Sometimes they're not. This is one of those times it's not. Um, if it's not rotating, then there's no, remember this is the angular energy, um, but if L is greater than zero, so it is rotating, here's what's happening, right? So the electron, so here's the nucleus, and the electron's going around it. Now, if R gets small, what happens? Right? See that? Goes faster, right? So that, if you get confused with this, of course that's energy raising. It is, of course it's the uh, ice skater pulling in her arms and um, going so fast that her eyes pop out. Um, I'm waiting to see that. So, so yes, this is energy raising. Okay, because I'm, I'm kind of blowing a lot of time talking like an idiot. Let me point out something. This is kind of cool. I, I was going to wait to do this, but uh, it's good enough time to do it now. Uh, okay, so, so I talked about L equals zero. And now you're used to seeing... Um, and here, since I'm drawing all fancy, you're used to seeing um, sp, right? Okay, so the electron, right, it's, it's round, so it's, it's going around the nucleus, right? Right, the s wave function is going around, I mean, look, the wave function is a little ball, so it's going around the nucleus, right? Yeah? No. Yeah, no, it's not. Look, so here's the crazy thing. So what I'm going to write, uh, I'm, I'm kind of jumping the gun here. This is the correct like way to draw the wave function because it has no angular nodes. That's the answer to one of your homework questions. Anyway, there's no angular nodes. You don't have the choice but to draw it as a sphere. But the electron specifically is not rotating around the nucleus because if it was, it would be a P state or a D state or an F state or a right? <laughs> It's the weirdest look, I, and I can't explain this better. It's so freaking weird. You draw it like a sphere, but it's not, it's not rotating. <laughs> now, now remember that what this means is, what this really means is, the electron is just somewhere here. Remember, wave functions are just, where is it probably at? And it just says that, well, it's probably somewhere around the nucleus and it's kind of evenly distributed. It doesn't say, it's implied, but, but it's not correct to think that the, that the electron's spinning around. And here's another little crazy factoid about all of this jazz. I mentioned this once to you before. We can image molecules, we can image individual atoms, but when it comes to electrons and quarks and neutrons and all that stuff, no, can't do it. There's no technology, and like, just like we think the speed of light is not something you can violate, we don't think that you can image things smaller than atoms. You can't image an electron. Um, you know, like, oh, look, the, so electrons are actually a finite size, right? So in these calculations, I don't know if you, you know, if you thought about it, right? When I use R, R can be zero. And that's the proton-electron distance. That means that the proton and electron have no size. Because if, I, if they did have a size, I'd have to make some kind of crazy, way more complicated model where, like, at some radius, they touch each other. And that would be, like, unbelievably complicated. Uh, when, I, when I say that there's just this distance, and therefore they can have zero distance, that means that they can, they can overlap each other in space. That means that they don't have any size, which is not true. Now, as for how um, people know the size of an electron, the size of a proton, and we do know how big they are, like, spatially. I'm actually not sure how they do that. <laughs> I don't have a clue. Um, but I know that it cannot be directly imaged in all the, uh, with all the technology that we have right now. So in terms of like this, elect so here's the proton, um, and, and of course the electron is, is somewhere here. We have no way of knowing 
what it's really doing. We only know where it's probably at, but whatever, however it moves around, however it moves around, to think of it as rotating, it may make little orbits, but it's not rotating in any type of coherent sense, which, it, which a P orbital would be. Um, Oh, anyway, blah, I kind of went off the deep end there, so I just wanted to, sh to point that out, and, uh, and I, maybe I shouldn't, because no one really knows what the heck is going on with that. Um, okay, and then last bit, um, again, I went off the deep, bad, bad case. Um, went off the deep end on that a little bit. Um, uh, then, of course, this, uh, this is not too hard. Energy, oh, yeah, that's lowering. Okay, okay, but now this guy actually introduces, now I'm going to talk about wave functions, there's really nothing else to talk about. Um, what happens if the electron, like, goes inside the, obviously, if, if the electron gets closer to the nucleus, it's energy, that's downhill energy, it's kind of obvious, right? That's, if, if you've ever wondered what that feels like, uh, imagine like a north magnet having a north and a south, and you, you know as a kid, as an adult, you, uh, whenever you get to play with magnets, you, you try to see how close you can get them before before you, you lose it. So that's basically what that would feel like if you could hold on to an electron with a proton. Energy lowering, that's obvious. But what happens? What would happen if the electron went into the nucleus? What would take Yeah, it, it would have infinite energy, right? Technically, I mean, you have one over zero, right? It would release infinite amounts of energy. So heads up, the wave function can't allow that. And now that I'm going to write the wave functions here to see that property. Uh, there's also uh, the fact that um, one of the snarky ways that you can say that that doesn't happen, that the, uh, uh, that the electron doesn't like, you know, collapse into the nucleus and the world explodes, is uh, the fact that a point in pure, even think of geometry when you have it as sophomores in high school, maybe sophomore junior year, Points have no volume. So uh, you could make the stipulation, this is a snarky way to get out of that little inconvenience, an electron hits a proton, the, the universe explodes. It literally would destroy the universe. It's to say that there's no probability because if they have no volume, they literally could never hit each other. They could never find each other. Um, that's kind of BSing. Okay, so for the wave functions, <laughs> Um, let me point out that what we're going to do is we're going to write down there's a radial and there's going to be an n. So uh, n is a quantum number. Okay, so obviously there's a quantum number. When you solve the radial guy in your 18th century textbook, oh, well, actually I found an infinite number of solutions and I can give them an index and, and the index starts with one and goes to two and goes to three and it's a whole number. Of, anyway, so you've seen that before. And now you know that these are actually the rows of the periodic table. Okay, so whenever I have to um, label a wave function, uh, there'll be a radial, there'll be a, a phi and a theta, the radial has to tell you what row and what whether you're in S or a P space. So I have to tell you that. Now the reason that is is um, n is a natural solution of the the radial Schrodinger equation, but remember it's L dependent. So when you solve this, I mentioned this a couple of times. It, it happens all the time. When you have this separability deal kick in and and there's like a part of it that's like, oh, like here's like L times L plus one. You have to plug in an L. You have to plug in L equals zero and solve. If L is one, you plug that in and then you go to your 18th century textbook and you solve. So anyway, so you've got to specify that. Um, now N controls, it controls L or L controls N, right? Based on what I just said. You have to, when you solve this, you've got to go ahead and specify what L is, and then it's tractable. You can't just, you can't just do the differential equation with an unspecified L. That doesn't work. So you specify an L. So in some ways, L controls N or N controls L because what you end up with is L is equal to 0, 1, 2. Remember L0 is S. 
up to n minus 1. So that's why the first row only has s states. Right? Hydrogen and helium, there's only s states. So, but again, like I say, um, it's a little chicken or egg. Um, but L, uh, L uh, uh, control, controls M, which is of course uh, minus L, minus L plus one, zero, dot L, not being symmetric, but anyway. Now, again, don't forget, um, okay, row of the periodic table, that's useful. SPD, what's this? Okay, so I've got 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, uh, 3d, 4s, 4f, yada, yada, yada. So what the hell is this? And you know this, now, 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 now I am technically about to cover this, but you, <laughs> you had this in high school. And I just drew some examples. I drew one example. Can you think of it? What was that? But, um, as soon as you were talking about hydrogen, and a 1s, as soon as you're not talking about a 1s state, you're talking about an excited state. So that, that's true, but not really useful here. So, so again, for you to keep straight, like what the heck is this? Because you're not going to remember this otherwise. Okay, again, row the periodic table, SPD. So what, what subset of that can you think of? Not number, number of like we're doing one electron. Like, on. What, uh, the orbitals, the orbitals. Such as a P, PX, PY, PY, PZ. Right. Um, if L is 1, that's P. Minus 1, 0, 1. That's 3. 3 P orbitals. D has L equals 2. Minus 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. That's 5. There's 5 L equals 2 orbitals that, as defined by M. Right? So you knew that. So uh, remember, I'm going to want you to break that down. Now, don't forget, uh, one of you brought up something that I've seen a uh, common mistake on tests. We are doing just one electron because I've only added I, Coulomb's law uh, minus E squared over R. There's only one electron. If there was more than one electron, I have to add another term to that, to that uh, Hamiltonian. And we have to do all this over again, right? So we're not. So we're doing one electron. Uh, and don't forget for hydrogen, hydrogen, uh, we're only doing one, uh, one S is the ground state, two S is an excited state, two P, but those are just excited states. You can take a hydrogen atom, and uh, you would do that by, remember how I drew a little vacuum chamber last time, and what you do is bleed hydrogen in and shoot electricity, literally, you have to do it that way. Um, shoot a bolt of lightning through it just by charging up some, some plates. Uh, what you get are some H atoms. You have to, remember H is, comes in the form of H2. You get some H atoms, and then they would shed energy, however they do that, uh, and then they would be in the 1S state. But what you could do is you could take those individual hydrogen atoms. You have to do this kind of quick before they find each other again, and they'll just form H2 again. But before they do that, you can shine the right wavelength on them to get them to a 2S, to a 2P, to a 3. Anyway, you can put them in excited states. Um, anyway, so, you know, it's just that one time I asked, I had a, I had on the test and said, okay, what's a 2p state? And someone said, well, they don't exist for hydrogen. All hydrogen is in the 1s state. No, that's the ground state. Excited states exist, and you can put things in excited states by dumping in energy. And anyway, another subject, spectroscopy. So, okay. Uh, now, again, the way we do, right, the wave functions is separated, but you see this on the present homework. I want to point out that we tend to put the, the theta and phi's together uh, as one. And of course we have to specify their L and M. Because remember that when we were solving the 3D rigid rotor, which turns out to be exactly the same as a hydrogen atom, even though R is not fixed in the hydrogen atom, that actually turns out not to matter. And that was for the reasons I said I wasn't even sure about myself. Um, that you use a, that's a Y. It's just we use the letter Y for spherical harmonic. You have to specify M so that you can solve L. So that's why you have to designate that. And again, this will tell you uh, round versus dumbbell, which is a P, versus super dumbbell, which is a D. Anyway. Okay. Um, all right, next bit. These guys are boring and they don't control energy. We actually, there are some nuances to these, and that's actually on your homework. Let me point out on your homework that. 
Um, it turns out, I'll explain this later, but it turns out that on a P, I think you're doing a P state on your homework. So let me give you a little hint on your homework because it's the last time before, um, before, before you have to turn it in on, on Wednesday. For a P state, it turns out that you know, as you just mentioned, that there's a PX and a PY and a PZ. It turns out that 